everyone. Today is a more serious video, and if you, I don't think you should have children in the room, and I also don't feel like if gruesome stuff bothers you, you should, um, you should continue watching. I'm kind of just going to give you a warning. Today, I went on a trip to visit the grave of a woman who used to be unidentified. She used to go by the name Beth Doe. She was recently, last week, identified as a 15-year-old girl named Evelyn Collin, who went missing, or who, she was discovered in 1976 in Carbon County, Pennsylvania, um, in three different suitcases, she was dismembered, and her baby uh, girl, full term, was also found with her. Um, she had been unidentified for 44 years. Um, she was originally found on December 20th, 1976. And went by death, Beth Doe until last week. Um, why am I talking about this? Because in my free time, I am I do web, web sleuthing. Um, if you don't know what that is, uh, you do you look at an unidentified person's case and you try to match them with a missing person. Well, Beth Doe was the case that I looked at. So how did I get interested in this case? Um, I'm going to say 10 to 12 years ago, I was looking into a case that actually happened when I was a kid in my hometown of Downingtown, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, where a woman was found in suitcases there. And I was on the internet, and I happened to come across the story of Beth Doe. And the fact that she was, the state she was found in, the fact that, I think it was like 30 some years at the time she hadn't been identified, the fact that she was found with her baby, it all kind of bothered me. And then I was like, well, I want to try looking at missing people and I want to try to see if I can match them. Sorry about that. Um, I, I had to free up some space in my camera. So, that's what I did. I started web sleuthing for Beth Doe to figure out who she was. And over the years, I submitted mm, eight to ten different women who looked promising. And they all ended up not being her. But in my free time, that's what I would do. I'd research missing people. I'd go on Google. I'd look for... You know, someone saying, oh, I'm missing my sister. I'm missing my daughter. Um, one time, I actually... Sorry about the screaming. My kids are in the background playing. Um, so, sometimes... One time, I was on Facebook, and someone said, it looks like my foster, her foster sister. So, I talked to her, and that was actually, like, a big lead that happened. Um, I actually ended up finding a picture of her foster sister... Um, from, from going on to a Facebook page, um, but she ended up being alive and well, and actually, if you want, I'm going to put the link to a video I'm featured in at the bottom of this video, and it's by Claudia Rivera, and she interviews me over what was happening at the time, but this woman's name was Maggie Cruz, and she was found alive and well. So recently, last week, the... Beth Doe was actually identified through family DNA. Her nephew put a sample in to the, to the DNA system. Um, this has actually become a very, very good way of finding out who Jane Doe's are. Um, so he did, and her name is Evelyn Collin. Um, and her family thought she, was, she just was living her own life. You know, she had a baby with this guy, Louis Sierra, and she was just living her life because they got a laugh. So her family was hoping that one day she would just show up and come back. Um, her mom loved her. Um, all of her family loved her. They just thought she was living her own life. Um, but this DNA came back, 
and they found out that she was actually Beth Dell. So now they know she just didn't leave and that she loved them. And now the baby's father's been arrested. So after all these years, he's going to have to face what he did. So here's footage of me going over to the graveyard. And thank you for watching. So I made it to Weatherly, and I am at the um, Potter's Field here. Um, I brought some flowers, and I brought something for for the baby. It's uh, I'm gonna put a couple of these link things on the grave in memory of the baby. Um, and I also wrote something online on this website called Wet Sleuths, and I wanted to read it to Beth Dell. So, hello, or Evelyn. So, I'm going to read this to her, and then I'm going to give a moment of silence for us to remember Evelyn and her baby daughter, who has since been named Emily Grace. <laughs> As you can see, there are a lot of a lot of people have come to visit Evelyn since since she's been named. Hey, Evelyn, you don't know me, but geez, I was trying to figure out who you were for all these years. So happy you got your name back. 1916 to 1976, she was 15 years old. Hi. Hey, Evelyn, I, I wanted to read you a note. It says, Dear Evelyn, you were so young, and you had your whole life ahead of you. Your heartless killer will now have to pay for what he did. You are no longer silent, and today... You are free. Today, you are no longer Beth Doe. But Evelyn Collin. And you and your sweet baby girl can now rest in peace. You are in our hearts forever. My name is Kendra. And I've been trying to figure out who you were. I'm way younger than this case. I'm way younger than when this happened to you. I was born in 84. And you were brutally murdered in 76. I didn't find out to this case till about 10 years, maybe a little longer ago. So, I want to give a moment of silence for you and sit here with you for a little bit. Now you are free.